I mean, during the course of the semester, I'd also give you on the final, for whatever whatever we used during the year. Good. Is it all yes. multiple choice? Yes. All right, so we're going to talk about parametric parametric equations today. So, parametric equations, if you, um, if you take in physics at all, or when you take physics, you'll see them a lot. One example of a set of parametric equations is when you talk about projectile motion, like a ball or something flying through the air. We talk about the height being a function of time, and the distance it flies being a function of time. So, the distance and the height are both functions of time. So those are, that's an example of a set of parametric equations. And so for a ball flying through the air, we talked about height being a function of time, and distance is a function of time. So we have two, two things and we, we plug in a time and we get a height and a distance. So our normal equation, I'm going to put normal in quotes here. So normal equation, the way we usually write, write these, is y equals sum f of x. y equals x squared, y equals 2x two, two plus 1, y equals cosine x, something like that. Um, parametric equations. look like x is some function of t, x is a function of t, and y is some function of t. So we plug in a, a t and we get an x and a y. t is the parameter, and we usually, we usually call t the parameter, it doesn't have to be t, but Usually we think of time being a parameter. And the graph of this equation, we get ordered pairs. So we get pairs of points. <coughs> so we get x of t and y of t. So we get our point by plugging a time into each of these separate equations. And the graph of these parametric equations is called a plane curve. So we have a, we have a function x and y, both functions of time. T, t, function of t, t is a parameter. And the graph of these points that we get, the x and the y, it's called a plane curve. <coughs> so we're going to talk about several different things that we do with parametric equations. We're going to talk about how we graph them. We're going to talk about how we eliminate the parameter to get a normal equation, what we call a rectangular equation, or an explicit equation. And we'll talk about how we come up with parametric equations. So we're good so far. All right, let's talk about how we graph these. <coughs> The easiest way, or the, the most basic way to graph a set of parametric equations is make a table of values and plot points. And that always, that will always work for plotting, plotting, for graphing a set of equations. So let's take a look at an example. Let's say we want to sketch uh, x equals 2t and y equals t squared plus 1 for negative 2 less than or equal to t less than or equal to 5. And the other way that you'll see that written is negative 2, 5. We use the interval notation. So I'm just going to make a, make a table. So I'm going to say t, x, and y. And we'll just plug in some numbers and plot points. 
So t goes from negative 2 to 5, so I'm going to go negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And I'm just going to plug in some points, plug, plug these into the equations, and get an x and a y. So when t equals 2, x equals negative 4, and y equals 5. When t equals negative 1, x equals negative 2, and y equals 2. So I'm just plugging in into the equations. When t equals 0, x equals 0, and y equals 1. And then I get a 2 and a 2 here, a 4 and a 5, a 6 and a 10, a 8 and a 17, and a 10 and a 26. And then I just plot those points. So I make a graph. The graph doesn't have to be beautiful and perfect. And I'm going to go by uh, two or by fives on the x's or on the y. Sorry. So this is five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, etc. All right. So when x is negative four, y is five. When x is negative two, y is two. So I'm just plotting points. When x is zero, y is one. When x is 2, y is 2. I'm just plotting these points. 1, 4. When x is 4, y is 5. When x is 6, y is 10. When x is 8, y is 17. And when x is 10, y is 20. Six, so somewhere up here. So my graph is going to go like so. And as t gets bigger, t goes from negative 2 to 5, we're moving along the graph in this direction. We call that the orientation of the graph. As t gets bigger, as t gets bigger, we move this direction along the graph. So as t, when t is negative 2, x is negative 4, so we move, we're, as t gets bigger, we're moving along this direction on the graph. So we call the orientation left to right in this particular case, or we just draw arrows on the graph to show the orientation. So the orientation just means what direction do you move as t gets bigger? And for plane curves, for parametric equations, it's not always, it's not always left to right. So the orientation just means what direction do you move as t gets bigger. All right, so plugging in, plugging in numbers and plotting points. All right, questions there. Okay, let's take a look at how we do this in our calculator. Um, so we'll do this next one in our calculator. Let's say that x equals uh, t squared and y equals t minus 1. And we're going from negative 3 to 3, which means negative 3 less than or equal to t less than or equal to 3. So go to the calculator. First thing we have to do is change our mode. So I'm going to go to the mode. And I'm going to go down here to where it says function. And I'm going to go over here, PAR means parametric. So I'm going to go over to the parametric and enter. Now we're in parametric mode. Now if I go to the y equals, I have an x. Let me clear that out. I have an x and a y. 
instead of just a y equals. So I put in my, my equation for x. x is going to be t squared. <coughs> and y is going to be t minus 1. And we want to go from negative 3 to 3. So I'm going to go to my window and make sure this says negative 3. And that says 3. T min is negative 3. T max is positive. And then as I graph, I can watch how the graph is, how the graph is sketched. And that will tell me my orientation. So I'm going to hit graph. And it graphed along this way. So my orientation, we can't really say right to left or left to right. We would draw little arrows on our graph to show the orientation. So if I sketched a graph, it would look something like this. And the orientation would be along the graph this way. So we can, sketch, we can sketch a sideways parabola using parametric equation, where with y equals we can't, we can't sketch a sideways parabola. All right, let's look at another one using our calculator. So let's say we want to graph uh, x equals t cubed and y equals t squared. And we're still going from negative 3 to 3. So we go back to the calculator. I'm going to go to my y equals. I'm going to turn this into a t cubed. Oops. t to the third. And we'll clear that one out. We'll make that one a t squared. And our window is still the same, negative 3 to 3. So I graph that. And there's my graph. And notice it went along this way and then that way. So the orientation would be left to right on this one. <coughs> so that one looks something like that, and my orientation is this way. Is that how it's always going to be on uh, like? Yeah, so that's that's always for parametric equations. This is how they're going to show up. It tells you how to find x and y. That's what a parametric equation is. You get one equation for x, one equation for y, and this the whatever our variable is is the parameter. All right, questions there. <coughs> okay, sometimes. Sometimes uh, we want to, we have a set of parametric equations, and we want to eliminate the parameter. We want to look, we want to get the normal equation. So that's what we're going to do next, is eliminate the parameter. Because often it's easier to graph, to graph an equation if we have our our normal y equals f of x equation than to, to plot points with a parametric equation. Eliminating the parameter is very easy. Uh, we want All we're going to do is solve one equation for the parameter and then substitute. Yes. Parameter is so in the, the example we've been using the parameters is t. We think of often we think of it as time. So for a specific time we get an x value and a y value. So our parameter is so our parameters kind of are like our new variable. So the x and the y depend on another separate variable, time. So time is our parameter is not always time. It could be theta, it could be an angle. So we, for each x and y, we, 
uh, for each angle, we get an x and a y. So if we thought of points on the unit circle, for a specific angle, we get a, uh, an x and a y. So the angle would be our parameter in that case. So it, it just it depends on the situation, what our parameter is. All right, so let's look at some examples of eliminating the parameter. Um, So let's say we have x equals 1 over square root of t. And y equals 2t squared. And we want to uh, eliminate, eliminate the parameter. So we solve one of the equations for t and substitute it into the other equation. So I'm going to work with this one. I'm going to multiply both sides by square root of t and divide by x. So I get square root of t equals 1 over x. Square both sides, so t equals 1 over x squared. And then I'm going to substitute that into the second equation. So I get y equals 2 times 1 over x squared squared. So this says y equals 2 over x to the fourth. So there would be my equation with the parameter eliminated. y equals 2 over x to the fourth. <coughs> in, the, in the original equation, is there are there any kind of restrictions on t? Yeah. But what are the restrictions? T has to be positive, or it could be zero, or it could be t, t, could t equal zero? Yeah. To one over zero? No, so we was, we're going to say T is greater than zero, not equal, we just decided that. Greater than zero. So if T is greater than zero, X is positive or negative? X is always positive. So X has to be greater than zero. And if we wanted to, let's look at a sketch of this, a graph of these parametric equations. So we know that x is always going to be positive. So let's enter this in our calculator and take a look at that one. Um, there we go. Clear out of that. What do we have? 1 over square root of x, or square root of t. And y was 2t squared. And I'm going to go to my window. We know that t has to be greater than 0, so I'm going to put that as 0. And I'm going to change this to 5. And then we graph that. And w as we graph this, watch the direction that this graph is, is sketched. So this graph is sketched from right to left. This graph was sketched this way. So this, the orientation of this graph would be right to left. So our graph kind of looks like this. And our orientation is right to left. Yes? So um, this would be this would be the equation, the the regular, the normal equation for these this set of parametric equations. Yes. Um, be yeah, it'd be exactly the same. And the other way we could tell the orientation of this graph is when t is very 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 small, x is going to be very 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 big. So when t is is small, x is going to start out way over here. And also, when t is very small, y is very small. So we start out way over here, way down here. And as t gets bigger, um, x gets smaller, and y gets bigger. So we move from right to left along that curve. <coughs> All right, questions there. So to eliminate the parameter, solve one equation for the parameter, substitute it into the other equation. So this would be the, the kind of the normal equation for this set of parametric equations. <coughs> All 
All right, the last thing we need to talk about today is finding a set of parametric equations. These problems, these problems are very easy. All we do to, to find a set of parametric equations is substitute. So I just want to look at a couple of examples. Um, we want to find a set of parametric equations for uh, y equals x squared plus 1. If, and these problems, for, for what we're going to do, you'll always be given the pr parameter. We won't have to figure it out. When you have to figure it out, it's a little more complicated. So we want to find a set of parametric equations if x equals t. Well, here's my first equation right here, x equals t. To find the second one, substitute that in here, and I get y equals t squared plus 1. So that's my set of parametric equations. x equals t, y equals t squared plus 1. So I just substitute. <coughs> if t equals x minus 2 this time, same, same equation but with different, different parameter, t equals x minus 2. Well, what is x going to be if t is x minus 2? <coughs> x equals t plus 2. And now I can substitute into the original equation. y equals t plus 2 squared. Uh, plus 1. So I'll multiply that out. I get t squared plus 4t plus 4 plus 1. Or y equals t squared plus 4t plus 5. So there's one parametric equation, one of the pair, and there's the other pair. The other, the matching one for that pair. So I just solve each equation, solve one equation for t, and then substitute. All right, questions there? Um, let, let me show you an example of uh, one slightly more complicated kind of parametric equation, set of parametric equations. There's a couple of these on your homework. Uh, trig parametric equations. So what if we had x equals 4 cosine theta and y equals 4 sine theta. So here instead of our instead of t being our parameter, <coughs> theta is our parameter. Any idea what this what kind of uh, graph this equation, this set of equations might have? Someone said something. So we had, someone says a sine wave, well, the x is going to be a cosine and y is going to be a sine. What, what did you think? This turns out to be a circle. Anytime you see a parametric, trig, trig parametric equations, think of your Pythagorean identity. I'm going to say x over 4 equals cosine theta. And y over 4, divide both sides by 4, equals sine theta. What's cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta? One. Always equal to 1. So x over 4 <coughs> squared plus y over 4 squared. x is cosine theta, or x over 4 is cosine theta. y over 4 is sine theta equals 1. So x squared over 16 
plus y squared over 16 equals 1. Or x squared plus y <coughs> squared equals multiply both sides by 16 equals 16. That's an equation of the circle. Center at 0, 0, and radius 4. So if you see parametric equations in involve sines and cosines, get the sine and the cosine by itself and use a Pythagorean identity. There's a couple on your homework that have to do with this. Will that will concentrate back on the quiz? Um, there are no trig parametrics on the quiz. All right. Questions? Okay. Homework. Last homework other than review. That's exciting. All right, there you go.